before we start taking everything out of the box and cutting and gluing um, and putting together it would not be a bad idea to uh, take a look at the tools and, and adhesives that um, are necessary for a pro project like this. The adhesives I'm going to use is mostly this thing here, uh, wood glue, the yellow aliphatic wood glue. Um, this uh, also is sold by Slick. Uh, you may not need so much of it, this is 500 grams uh, or half a litre, but um, a smaller bottle might do. Then I'm going to use um, CA glue. There are two types that I'm using, uh, the thin type and the medium. Um, and with these also I have a, um, a kicker. Or, yeah. And then I'm going to use epoxy. Epoxy is absolutely necessary in some places and 30 minute or slow cure um, is what you want. Do not use five minute epoxy. Yeah. It, for one, um, it dries too quickly or hardens. And um, the second part is that um, it is brittle because of the short hardening time. Now, the most important tools. Um, the most used tool in model building is probably the hobby knife. Something like this. You have a breakable blade and you can take it in uh, and um, lock it. This is used a lot. Um, for precision work, I like to use a Swan and Morton knife with a number 11 blade. These you can get in most pharmacies. Now, if you could sort of um, mix these together to have this kind of blade retractable, that would be ideal, wouldn't it? Well, a friend of mine found one of these on the internet. This is a retractable surgical blade, very safe, very easy to use. Now, you're going to need a pencil, who doesn't, and um, a saw, something like this, a small, um, small saw. This is from Exacto. Um, sandpaper. You always want to use sandpaper. This is a a roll of um, P100 paper, and uh, then I have this. Um, this is a, a a sponge or a, a foam material with this netting sandpaper on it. Uh, this one is rather coarse, it's P80, very nice to use when you're forming something. It just sticks onto the foam and um, then when it's full of sawdust you just rip it off, shake it out and put it on again. Really nice. Um, pins. These T-pins are very, very nice. You can get them in most mod uh, hobby shops. Um, rulers. Steel ones. A small one that I keep in my pocket and a 30 centimeter one that I use for cutting, cutting along and measuring. Um, you really can't do without these. Clamps. 
pegs. Well, your everyday clothes pegs are um, very, very useful in model building. Then you have these little ones. You've got bigger ones. Um, and you've got some like this. Um, you can never have too many clamps. Remember that. And the last tool I'm going to show you is this. This used to be a hacksaw blade. Um, I cut it off to get this point on it and then I put um, this uh, shrinking tube on it to just so it's easy to hold. This is going to come in very useful when we start on the model. When you look at the drawings, the plans, you will notice that there are these numbers uh, with circles around them. Here is W5, for example. This is the number of each part of the model. But when you look at the parts in the uh, in the boards before you cut them out, you will see that uh, none of them are marked. So how can you find out which is which? Well, I read the instructions. Haha. <laughs> and in this one, where the pictures are, I found drawings of all the boards that come with the model and all the parts. So what I do now is I, I take something like this. Um, here it says 12 millimeter birch ply and this is indeed 12 millimeter birch ply. And it's got four parts on it. F13, F20 and two of F25. So now I just write down F13, um, F25, F25 and F20 and now I can mark in the book that I have found these parts and mark them. Now this is what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take every board out of the box and write with a soft pencil the correct number on each part and verify that I have them all. Now I have finished marking all the parts and here for example we have um, a board with W4 and W1 on it. Now I have to get them out of this. This is um, quite hard birch plywood and I want to get them out. The best tool for this is the little piece of hacksaw blade that I showed you before. Now, what you do is you just saw through the little tabs that keep the piece on the board. like this. There are usually four or five of them for each piece. Couple more. Some people might be tempted to just break the part out of the board but then you run the risk of uh, breaking the part. This is much better. Now we have the little part ready. But there's one thing that is a consequence of this being CNC routed. Um, the router has a round tooth. And here, for example, if the camera wants to um, focus on it, 
probably not. Well, here we have a round corner. But this will not do because the piece that comes in here has to get all the way up to this, up to top, uh, onto the top. And here we have um, a spar that has to, to lie on the rib, but it can't because this corner is rounded. So we can use this little tool very simply to go into the corner and make it sharp. That's all we have to do. Here and here. So now we have sharp corners instead of round ones. In this case uh, we'll have to use a little file or may be able to do it this way just using the like this and that will make it um, make it sharp I also have to take these away there's a, a little bit left of the uh, of the tab so um, some sandpaper and a piece of wood Just sanded um, enough to get the tab away. Uh, you don't want to flatten, for example, this piece of wing. Here's a little one. That's it. Now I'm going to have to finish um, taking out all the ribs squaring the corners of all of them and um, I can't start building until I finish this. So this is my project for the day. Cut everything out, sand it smooth, square the corners.